All right, boys and girls. So here we are in the <clears throat> completely messy desk going on here. So I'm currently going to be upgrading my 3D printer. Um, so this is just a brief update of some of the things I'm doing. Um, I redrew some of this bracket. Um, this actually will be holding the bottom, uh, or actually the top, but I put it on the bottom because of how I engineered it originally. The uh, home sensor is going to be mounted on there. There's going to be a pulley on here to hold the uh, belt out so it's square all the way up and down, but then I'm putting a 20 tooth pulley instead of that 40 tooth pulley on the drive side of things. Um, this is the magnetic hall switch. Um, so inside here, this is for auto bed leveling. Inside here is a is a 5 millimeter magnet square. Let's see if we can focus. 5 millimeter square magnet. And then there's also one here on the back. And then the hall sensor right here. And uh, basically what this is going to do, sorry about the awesome footage here. This is going to be mounted on the plate here that holds everything in place. I printed another one of those as well. And uh, this will actually go down and touch the bed in multiple places and do a calibration of the level on the bed. Then when it's done, it will go down, get sucked up, and then start printing. So this goes back up higher than the, the print head. Um, this was the original bracket here for a different style sensor and for a different um, configuration that I'm using. So I redrew it a little differently and added some supports and uh, the top there. So I'm going to actually be drilling a hole in here and mounting mine this way. Originally I think it's designed to be mounted inside but it hits my um, hot end. So the next thing I'm going to do, uh, again this is the base that holds the uh, print head. I just traced it out on here and then went back and kind of redrew it. And then I had some old LED strips. Uh, they're not very bright um, and they're, five, they're 12 volt and they've already got the resistors built into here. So what I'm going to actually do is uh, take this copper clad board. I've marked it out. Um, I'm going to be cutting out basically the solid portion that you see here and X marks the spot. I'm going to put my LEDs there. I'm going to make sure all my holes are in the right spot and then I'm going to literally you can see how the traces are laid out underneath the white coating there. I'm literally going to trace these out and lay them out exactly like that on here except I'm going to actually take a marker or a Dremel bit or something and uh, just Dremel the actual pattern out that I want instead of making a real circuit board uh, the old-fashioned way. I might change my mind, but I think that's what I'm going to do. Now I'm just going to solder the LEDs and the resistors in the right spots. And I'm going to mount that circuit board on the bottom side of this bracket. And then I'll have light shining down at all points in time. So that's the idea behind it. We'll see if it works out that way. So I just wanted to give you the brief, quick overview of what I've got so far. Um, and then I'll give you some more details, of course, as I move along with this upgrade. So auto-leveling, smaller teeth... Uh, in the in the sprockets and um, lights on the print head and then um, the last thing was uh, just firmware upgrade in general so we'll be back with more alright guys well the Dremel is your friend in this mode so the sanding disc and the cutoff wheel actually worked really well on this sorry I didn't film it it's a bit messy and uh, I just wanted to get it accomplished but uh, I actually, kind of looking at this, I think what I'm going to do is uh, put these three screws on the outside. Those are going to be my holding points. Um, actually, that's probably not necessary because I'm going to have two bolts holding this whole thing on. So maybe I'll change my mind. But I thought I could drill holes in the very tips and put screws out there. I could do both. So I'll go ahead and mark all my holes and drill those very carefully. Then I'll start tracing out how I want to lay my LEDs, and we'll get that accomplished. Sweet! Alright guys, after tracing out the layout of the circuit board, you can see that there's positive negative here, positive negative here, that's a parallel rail. They're always connected together, so you can chain these in a series. And then, uh, so you can see there's two LED diodes and one resistor per two LED diodes. Um, it's always better to do a single uh, resistor uh, I don't know what I call that. A single resistor to a single diode, but in this case they're doing two. And so they've got two sets of those in parallel. 
and then those are running in series uh, along the daisy chain there. So that's how they're configured. So we're going to lay that out upon this two sets of these on here. So see if we can accomplish that goal. All right. Well, as interesting as this looks, I did manage to actually uh, accomplish laying these components out. Each one of these is in. Uh, get a diode resistor diode of some combination and then a point where you just got a positive and a negative and they're all connected so everywhere there's a trace there's pretty much just a single trace there's the only place that there's a double trace or a triple trace um, it's just right at this point here which shouldn't be a problem I should have plenty of room to put three traces in one spot so there you go so let's uh, huh, let's get to marking this board and we'll take the Dremel and actually just cut all of our grooves in the right spot and hope it works. Okay. Alright, so although this looks quite complicated, the black line that you see right there, that's where I'm going to be making the cuts. And that will leave the traces that I'm looking for in that fashion. See if I can transfer that over. Alright, so although yes, that does look kind of confusing, I'm just going to take the Dremel and a very fine tool and I'm going to cut the copper away where I've marked the black ink and what's left will be the traces and I should be ready to go. So let's give it a shot. Safety first boys and girls. I've decided to use a fine tip like this. I was originally going to use a round wheel but I'm going to try this first. Let's see what happens. I only had one little spot that ran away from me, so I'm just going to have to put a little bit of solder over that. But uh, we'll go over that with a fine tooth comb and make sure all the traces are traced. Solder our components on there, see what happens. All right, well, there we go. Desoldered all the surface mount components. Put them on here. Let's see if it works. Go. My resistors are getting hot, that means it's good. Success. They're not that bright, I really didn't want them to be that bright. They're just the right brightness. Success! So there you go. So that is how you take some recycled old regular lights 
and turn them into whatever you want without any special tools. Soldering iron and a Dremel. That's all I use today. Um, so we'll continue on the upgrades. See where we end up here. Now the only important thing is to remember you're gonna have to uh, make sure you insulate your screws. So I'll go back and Dremel out the outsides a little bit to make sure my screws don't hit. Plastic washers. Ta-da! Sweet.